The Tsavo National Park in southeastern Kenya is one of the largest nature reserves in the world. It covers 21,000 square kilometers of semi-arid grasslands, savanna, and acacia forests. Day after day, something very unusual takes place here. feeding of young elephants who've lost their mothers and been brought up by humans. The orphans are now getting to know life in a world that is new to them here in the wild. We're accompanying them for a year as they're slowly reintroduced to nature. It takes many years until the hand-reared animals can make do without human help. The elephant orphans are embarking on a great adventure, returning to the wild. In the mid-20th century, there were more than 40,000 elephants in Tsavo. By the late 1990s, there were just 10,000 left, mainly as a result of relentless poaching. Elephants were hunted for their tusks to supply the illegal ivory trade, especially in northern Tsavo, where no elephants were left by the start of the 21st century. This is the story of their return. The first elephants to live in the north of Tsavo since then are young orphans who have been reared by hand and are now preparing to live independent lives without human help. The David Sheldrick Wildlife Trust brought them to Tsavo six years ago. We are not seeing any wild elephants. The survivors of those times actually decided to quit this area. And you know, with elephants, actually, they do keep passing knowledge from generation to another. So whenever they had their own babies, they used to tell them that a northern area is not safe. So whenever you are there, keep off from people or just hide. But the hope is that eventually, wild elephants will also come back from southern Savo. The orphans from the rehabilitation unit of the Sheldrick Trust go for walks with their keepers and thus get to know their new home. They each have a name derived from the place where they were found and rescued as babies. The youngest member of the group is Enasuit. He's only been here for a few weeks. For him, the process of returning to the wild is just beginning and Savo is an unfamiliar world full of new impressions and dangers. An adult elephant has no natural enemies apart from humans. But a pride of lions certainly represents a risk for a two-year-old. In 
In the evening, the infants head for home. And home is the rehabilitation center at Ithomba. They spend their nights here, secure behind a wire fence. The trough out front is one of the few places to get water in northern Tsavo. Since the unit opened in 2004, more than 20 young orphans have graduated from the program and completed their return to the wild. The keepers call them their ex-orphans. These elephants, for example, they used to live in the stockade but are now free. They've come to visit the current residents who are expected back from their outing. Elephants live in family groups, each led by the most experienced female, the matriarch. 16-year-old Yatta heads the group of ex-orphans here. They left the center two years ago. They started by uh, moving out, not coming for one day, the other day coming back to the stockade until one moment they just stopped coming back to the stockade. Because we are leaving the stockade open, if they come, they just get in. So even if they, they came that time, actually they were not getting to the stockade, but instead they were just lying outside here. So showing that uh, they are fully dependent and they can take care of themselves. Elephants are social creatures and they have a whole repertoire of communication skills. They produce a range of sounds, including low-pitched rumbles. These low notes are a greeting. The young resident orphans are coming home from their outing. The big ones we are welcoming the young one from the bush. So the sound you heard actually is a welcoming sound, telling them welcome, welcome, welcome. They are bonded together because they have been together here at the stockade for a number of years before the Yata group decided now it can be on its own. Uh, so it became independent and left the young group still with the keepers. So they still remember each other. And most of the time, the Yata group do come to say hi to the group that is still stock independent and also to the keepers who took care of them when they were young up to when they left the stockade and joined the world. In the rehabilitation center's kitchen, the keepers prepare a special milk formula for the little ones. For the first couple of years, baby elephants only drink milk. Eventually, they start to eat grass, leaves, wood, and bark. Here, they get a mixture of water, milk powder, and vegetable fat. They're given the bottle three times a day. Daphne Sheldrick, the founder of the trust, developed the formula back in the 1970s. It's that special mix that makes it possible to hand rear orphaned baby elephants. A baby elephant is milk dependent for the first two and a half years of life. But for orphans, for those who need milk, we continue them giving them milk out to an age of three. Then from there, they just stop, they wean themselves off, or we just wean themselves off. So, but in the world, they are milk dependent uh, up to an age of two and a half years. They do like the milk so much. And with the weak ones, we can continue giving them even for a longer period of time, depending on, uh, depending on the health of, uh, of that orphan. An elephant develops at about the same pace as a human. 
their babies until they're about three, after that they're small children. And like human children, they're eager to explore and investigate their surroundings. Fences and gates are a nuisance. Lloyd Juk is now six, and the temptation to spend the night out in the wild is strong. The ex-orphans are waiting at the trough in front of the unit. Joke has finally managed to break out, along with a male companion, Cora, who's seven. They're about to spend their first night outside the center. For safety's sake, they have to stay close to the older elephants, the ex-orphans. So they have to catch up fast. Benjamin lets them go. The time has come for them to assert their independence. Our mission is to see them end up successfully in the world. So it's one way of learning what goes out there at night. And it is good to start early before they finally leave us. Because when they finally leave us, they will have known what goes on there at night and how they can maybe protect themselves in case of any danger. Sleeping rough will be a new experience for Lloyd Juk and Cora. Elephants also roam and browse during the night. They don't sleep more than two to four hours at a stretch, and they usually sleep standing up. Elephant lying on the ground can hardly defend itself and is easy prey. They only lie down when there's no danger, or if, like Cora, they're young and inexperienced. These lions aren't hungry, they've just killed an antelope, so young elephant is not on the menu. The rest of the night passes quietly for Lloydjuk and Cora. It's also been quiet at the rehabilitation unit. This is in a site. After the long night in the stockade, the youngsters want to stretch their legs. The boisterous Enasoit leads the way out into the park. The others make sure the little one doesn't get into trouble. The orphans explore the bush as they browse. They also have to learn how to behave like elephants, and they learn that through imitation. The ex-orphans, the graduates of the rehabilitation center, are the perfect teachers, as they know how to survive in the wild. 
the orphans have met up with Yatta and her group. Communicating by means of low rumbling sounds that travel kilometers, they had evidently set up the appointment. Uh, they do communicate uh, through infrasound, uh, which means that even now, the older group already know that uh, the, the stockade dependent ones have already left the stockade and uh, now they are heading to eastern direction. So obviously they know the, the, the exact place where they will meet. Around Ithomba are acacia forests and wide expanses of grassland and savanna. It's a long way from civilization. Northern Tsavo is one of the most untouched regions of Kenya. The Galana River flows from west to east, dividing the Tsavo National Park in two. It's the most important source of water here, and it's home to lots of hippopotamuses and crocodiles. South of the Galana, the terrain is flat open grassland. Tsavo is famous for its red earth. Much of Tsavo's wildlife lives south of the river. To the north, there's more dense scrubland and Savo's best-known landmark, the Yatta Plateau. It's the world's longest lava flow, almost 300 kilometers in length. Northern Savo is closed to visitors. It's an excellent place to return orphaned elephants to the wild. A couple of kilometers from the rehabilitation unit, Yatta and the other ex-orphans are busy doing what they do much of the time, browsing. A fully grown elephant eats up to 400 kilograms of grass and leaves a day. are on their way to meet Yatta, the matriarch, and her group. It's an hour's walk from the stockade to the spot where the ex-orphans are waiting. Instruction commences. Yata takes charge of little Enasoit, the youngest among the visitors. Yata and the small Enasoit, they are communicating through touch using the trunks, putting the trunk in the mouth, or maybe touching close to the ear, close to the mouth. So that's what they do. And uh, as far as the, the vegetation is concerned, the young ones look at what the older group is feeding on. Lloyd-Juk and Cora, who'd broken out of the unit the day before, spent the night with Yata's group, and they're looking fine. Elephants eat grass, branches, leaves, and bark. Cora is busy practicing how to scrape the bark off a tree trunk, following the example of an older colleague.
Until a few years ago, there were no longer any elephants in northern Tsavo, following decades of poaching by ivory hunters. In 2001, the Kenya Wildlife Service opened a station in Ithumba. Park rangers go out on patrol and have succeeded in putting an end to poaching in northern Tsavo. Walking is, apart from feeding, elephants' main activity. They can cover up to 100 kilometers a day. Orphans, Yata and her group, go out on ever longer expeditions. It's not until two weeks later that they come and visit the orphan station at Ithumba again. Benjamin welcomes his old friends. How have you been, Wendy? You have gone away for too long. But I can see you are fine. You do not have any problem. Physically, you are fit, and I think otherwise. For us, we see even two days, they are too long because she has been with us for four or five years. And if she goes even for a day, we feel that is too long because of the friendship between us and, and them. Benjamin is also hoping to see Cora again, the young male who broke free two weeks ago with Lojuk. He hasn't been back since. is exhausted after his long excursion, unlike any stroll he'd taken before. Now, just join the world. Uh, an elephant to join the world, it depends on several things. One is uh, how old an elephant was uh, when he was being rescued, whether he or she was able to have a recollection of his family. The other thing is personality, uh, whether it can uh, be courageous enough to join the world early before its time. Yeah, because we have got some other ones who are outgoing and adventurous, and those who are adventurous and outgoing they often join the world without any problem.
An elephant's skin is up to three centimeters thick in places, but other areas are very sensitive. Dust helps protect the many folds, rather like baby powder for humans. But the technique of applying dust has to be learned. Enersoit is an attentive student. He watches, and then he tries it out for himself. There's been a surprising new development. Enasoit, Yata and the other orphans and ex-orphans are not alone. They're being followed. This bull, who must be about 17 years old, is not one of the ex-orphans. He's probably the first wild elephant to be spotted in northern Tsavo in years. Perhaps he's the scout, and more wild elephants will follow and repopulate the region. He continues to trail Yata and her group. They started communicating uh, with the orphans, and the orphans actually assured them that uh, this area they are being scared of is safe. Northern Tsavo is very dry. This man-made watering hole should also attract wild elephants. Every day at noon, the orphans from the Sheldrick Trust come here to drink. Enasoit and the other little ones get a bottle of milk.
Elephants trumpet when they're happy or excited. Enasoit trumpets when the water's too cold. A mud bath is an important part of the daily routine. It's cooling, it helps protect the skin, and it's fun. The wild elephant is still following Yata and her group, but he hangs back and doesn't join in. He observes the antics of the little ones in the mud from a distance. He's not the only one to hang back. Cora does so too. Since he broke out of the compound and spent nights in the wild, he's been keeping his distance from the other orphans. Cora is training for his future. Sometimes he is independent. That's how bulls behave. Because even out in the wild, you will find there are lone males walking on their own without any group. So depending on how courageous or how one is so independent to himself. So the time is maybe out for, for him to go and join the world. Young males like to test their strength. This is a pushing match. Cora is challenging an older and stronger bull. When they get tired, they'll uh, just stop fighting and uh, continue feeding to gain more strength of, uh, of fighting again, maybe in the evening or tomorrow morning, until one of them surrenders. Uh, if there is no surrender, then they'll be doing this on daily basis or whenever they meet, until one of them decides now I've been defeated, so you can take over the championship.
Weeks have passed. Yata and the other ex-orphans have been off roaming. Each trip is longer than the last. Visits to their old home at the rehabilitation unit become less and less frequent. So it's a rare treat when they show up at Ithumba. The resident orphans greet them warmly. Benjamin is pleased to see the ex-orphans again, but he notices that something has changed. No, 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 no. <laughs> Yata is trying to show him something. She wants to introduce Benjamin to a new member of her group, the wild elephant who had been so reticent to join in. She really has accepted uh, to be led by water because there is no time a herd of elephants can be led by, by a male, unless it is um, a herd of males. Mm -hmm. So by coming and following Yata, although he is older, it shows that he has accepted to be led by, by Yata. A wild elephant has joined a group of ex-orphans. That's another first for the rehabilitation project of the David Sheldrick Wildlife Trust. Now one can only hope that more wild elephants turn up here in northern Tsavo. Over the course of a year, there are periods of rain and of drought in Tsavo. Now the dry period has begun. There's hardly any fresh water. And the man-made watering hole is almost dry. At the compound, there's been another surprise this morning. A group of wild elephants has turned up. Four big males aged between 30 and 40. been drawn to the water. Elephants need to drink a lot, up to 140 liters a day. Adult males are for the most part loners. These four probably teamed up to explore unfamiliar territory. Yes. 
elephants have been traveling the same routes through Tsavo for centuries, but had kept away from the north for decades. Now that some adult males are back, it's the turn of groups of females and youngsters to leave the south and head north. Elephants in the south do indeed hear the news that the area they all used to avoid because of the poachers is once again safe. Now they can move into the northern areas of the Tsavo National Park. The return of wild elephants has begun. Soon, they'll meet the orphans there. A few weeks later, near the rehabilitation unit, a two-year-old wild baby turns up. It's lost its herd, and it's in desperate need of water. Benjamin and the other keepers came upon the little elephant by chance. It needs to be brought to the station as fast as possible. It's the very first time that they've had to rescue a young elephant in this area. It's sad that the baby is alone and lost and in need of care. But at the same time, its presence shows that female wild elephants and their young are back in northern Tsavo. The wild baby is suspicious of humans, but with a little luck, it won't have to stay here too long. We'll keep on watching whether our mother will be coming round. So if we manage to see our mother, then we'll be very happy and uh, maybe she will tell us by the excitement. Because I'm sure when she meets with her mother, then she will go. In the evening, the resident orphans come home with their keepers from their outing. Loijuk, the female who'd run off several weeks earlier but had come back, attends to the bewildered visitor. Humans represent a threat to wild elephants. But the baby girl will have to get used to the keepers because they'll provide the milk she needs to survive. They've built her a special stall where she'll spend the next few days. This is where we'll train uh, how to take milk. Because, uh, as you have seen, when she's in a very big area, it's very difficult to handle her. But when she's here, actually, it's very easy for a keeper to come and try to trick her to take the milk.
the next morning, more elephants appear near the compound. Adult males and females and their young. Perhaps they're the herd of the lost girl in the stall. It turns out they're not her family. She doesn't react to them, and they don't react to her. They're strangers, and the baby's mother is nowhere in sight. If her mother don't come back, then she'll be part of our family. And uh, when she comes of age, then she'll be able to decide whether she would like to go back to the world or stay with us. The residents are extremely interested in the herd of wild elephants outside. They meet at the water trough in front of the compound. Once it began, we had no wild elephants coming. But because of our, our orphans, actually this area has uh, many wild elephants have come in due to the, to the orphans. If it were not for the orphans, I think no wild elephant would be around. So it's because of the orphans that uh, a lot of development is coming to this area. Today is a very special day. For the very first time, the orphans have met a herd of wild elephants here. The plan of the David Sheldrick Wildlife Trust has proved successful. It's like a dream coming true because actually uh, that's what we want for the have to teach our young ones uh, things like communication, uh, what kind of uh, plans uh, is best for them and uh, general behavior, how they should behave when maybe they, they are in the company of maybe dominant males, when they are with a big female such kinds of things. So we see that actually we are uh, actually successful in what we are doing uh, by seeing actually these wild elephants coming to join our orphans. Instead of our orphans going to join the wild elves, now the wild elves are coming to join the orphans, which is a very good thing. Orphans, ex-orphans and wild elephants. They're back and they're here to stay in northern Tsavo.